Good morning, first grade. Today is Thursday, April 9th, and today is such an exciting day for our devotions. We are getting here at the very end of Holy Week, and we are going to get to the best part. Just so you know that tomorrow, Friday, is Good Friday, which is a holy day and a special day. So on Friday, I will not have any devotion videos, nor will I have any learning videos. So on Friday, you won't find anything from me. I hope that you take that day as a special and holy day and maybe do something with your family to remember that Good Friday is the day that Jesus was crucified. So I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to watch maybe a church a Good Friday service. Maybe I'll try and have communion and really reflect on how important that day is. So nothing um, will be posted online for Friday. Just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and think about where we were in our Easter story. Now think if Good Friday is the day that Jesus was crucified and then he was laid into the tomb. Well, that actually started Sabbath for the Jewish people, which is why on Saturday, really nothing happened. Sabbath is a day of rest, which means they could not do any work on Saturday. I can imagine that if Friday is the day that Jesus was crucified, Saturday must have been a really hard day. Saturday must have been sad and confusing and quiet and a day of waiting. I can't imagine how um, Jesus' friends and disciples must have felt on that day, or even other followers of Jesus who knew what he had accomplished during his lifetime, and hearing the news of what had happened to him, and now thinking, what is going to happen next? It must have been a really hard day. Well, when Sunday started, Sunday is when there is more good news. Right? Friday is important and we are so thankful, but Friday is not the end of the story and praise God for that because Sunday is a day that can fill us with joy and with hope because God is so amazing. Friday on that morning, there are two women who go to go and visit the tomb because they think they need to start the preparations for the burial of Jesus's body. So they go and expect a few things. They expect to find that the tomb is covered with a huge boulder and it's closed and sealed shut. They do expect to find Roman soldiers standing out as guards. But when they go there, that's not at all what they find. Let's go ahead and continue from our devotional. This is from Matthew chapter 28, verses two and three. There was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and the angel went to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. His body shone like lightning. Right, we've talked about that before, how angels are so bright. His clothes were as white as snow. After Jesus died, there was a waiting period, but then the earth shook. An angel from heaven appeared. He scared off the soldiers. They ran. A big stone blocked the entrance to the tomb, but the angel pushed the stone away and he sat on it. God has ways of surprising us. Go ahead and repeat after me. Thank you for angels, God. Right, we've talked about how angels are God's special messengers. Let's go ahead and continue our last devotion about our Easter story. This comes from Matthew 28, verses 5 and 6. Now, remember I told you there were some women, two women who went to go to the tomb. And they see the angel there and they're so surprised. And this is what happens next. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid. <laughs> We've also talked about that before. Angels are so incredible and so bright that usually the first thing that they have to say when we read about them in the Bible is, don't be afraid. <laughs> I can imagine most people when they see just how incredibly bright they are because they're full of God's presence here on earth, most people are so surprised when they see them. So they do often start by saying, don't be afraid. Oops. <laughs> 
it's gonna be okay. Here's what the angel says. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said would happen. Come and see the place where he was lying. Some women went to visit the tomb. They were Jesus' friends and they were very sad. They missed Jesus a lot, but they were in for a surprise. When they got there, the angel said, Jesus is gone, he is risen. The tomb was empty. Jesus rose from the dead. He kept his promise. Go ahead and repeat after me. Hallelujah. Thank you for rising from the dead, Jesus. That shows God's great power. God has power over death. That's so incredible. We can be so thankful for that. Let's go ahead and think about our prayers for this morning. We're going to remember to pray for all of our compassion students, praying for all of you and your families, praying for all of the BCS families, praying also for everybody who is sick. Maybe there are people who are just hurting in different ways, people who are sad or frustrated or disappointed or confused at this time. We can pray that during this Easter season that God's love will fill up their hearts. Let's say a prayer for today. Let's hold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Easter. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your power, and for rising from the dead. You are so amazing. I pray for Griselda, all compassion students, anyone who is sick or hurting in any way. Please help everyone who is looking for an answer to listen and find your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Great job. Let's take a look at our resurrection eggs. These are our final ones. We'll look at 11 and 12. Okay, so this one says, Mark chapter 16, verse 4. But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. I love that detail. The Bible makes it very clear. This is not just your average little rock that you can just pick up any person could find along the road. It makes that important uh, remark. It's a very large stone, right? It's a big boulder, very heavy. Pretty incredible that the angel was able to move it all by itself. And these are the final two. These are number 12. I think you might know what it is. It looks like this. It comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. First grade, I hope you've enjoyed these resurrection eggs as much as I have. Uh, let's go ahead and practice our memory verse together. Go ahead and say it with me. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. Let's take a look at our affirmations, too. And let's say these all together. I reach my goals. I do my best in my work. Great job. First grade, I pray that you and your family have a wonderful Easter together. We can use this time to really reflect on how amazing it is that God sent his son Jesus to die for us, to forgive us of our sins, and to give us a new life with him, both here on earth 
and someday in heaven. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Easter. He is risen and he is risen indeed.